Hi everyone, welcome to the week 9 video for Acts 231. This week we started talking about bonds, which is chapter 6 in the textbook. And a bond is basically the same thing as a loan, it's just that the roles are reversed. Usually a bond is from either a company or a country or a province even, can issue a bond. And they're the ones who are taking out the loan from an investor. So the investor is giving them money, the uh, purchase price of the bond, and in return, the company or country or province gives the investor coupon payments at regular intervals, usually semi-annually, but there can be other frequencies, as well as a redemption value at the very end of the life of the bond, or at the maturity. Now, there are two ways that we talked about to calculate the actual price that the investor would be willing to pay for this particular bond. The first way is just using first principles, we're going to look at the present value at time zero of all of the payments that the issuer of the bond is going to make to the investor. So we've got the coupon payments, each coupon amount is F, the face value, times R, the coupon rate per period, and then there are N coupons. So we want the present value of the annuity where the amount is FR. Plus, we also want to include the present value at time zero of the redemption amount, C, which is paid at time N. So we have to add on there C times V to the N. So that's the easiest way to get the price of the bond. Another slightly different way is to manipulate that formula and we end up with this one right here. So the price that we pay is actually going to be the redemption value plus uh, a certain amount times an annuity factor. And now that amount could be positive or negative depending on the relationship between FR and CJ. If CJ is bigger, then that amount there of course will be negative. If CJ is smaller, it'll be positive. So, Basically, because of the difference between those two quantities, we can determine whether a bond is sold at a discount or at a premium. If P and C are equal to each other, we say the bond is sold at par. If P is greater than C, as in we're paying more for the bond than we're going to get back at redemption, that would mean the bond is priced at a premium. And finally, if P is less than C, then the bond is priced at a discount. In each of these cases, we could actually come up with an amortization schedule for that bond. And this works exactly the same way as an amortization schedule for any other loan. We've still got the same columns. We have T, the time of each coupon payment, the payment itself, which is always going to be that level amount, FR, and then we have the amount of interest paid off and the amount of principal uh, change in each of those coupon payments. So all of the formulas are exactly the same for the amortization schedule for a bond. We can just interpret the principal repayment column in a slightly different manner. If the bond is originally sold at a premium, so the price was higher, then the amounts in the principal payback column can be interpreted as the amount of premium write down. So eventually, as the bond gets closer and closer to redemption, its value is going to approach the value of the redemption, C. So each time a coupon payment is made, the book value of the bond is going to decrease slightly until it's just equal to C at the very end. The flip side, if the bond is priced at a discount, then each coupon payment is actually going to increase the book value of the bond so that as it gets closer to redemption, uh, it's worth the same amount as the redemption value C. It starts off lower and then each coupon payment it increases slightly until it gets to the same redemption value. Um, so that's how we can find the bond's book value at any coupon date just by doing this amortization schedule exactly as we would for any other loan. The interesting thing happens is what happens between coupon payments? How could we value the bond between coupon payments? And in that case we have a number of different methods to look at that. The so-called dirty price is actually looking at the exact value at a particular time t of all the future payments left to be made for that bond. There's a slight problem with that though, in that that function there is going to have some discontinuities at the coupon payment times. Since one second before the coupon is paid, the price of the bond would include that coupon that's about to be paid. But one second after the coupon has been paid, the value of the bond would no longer include that coupon. So there are going to be discontinuities in the graph if we look at the dirty price. So then we came up with three different methods to sort of smooth out that function and have a nice smooth curve or smooth set of disjoint lines um, that are known as the clean prices that we would keep on the books for the book value of our bond. And all three of those methods I've actually outlined in a spreadsheet which is posted on Angel, so you can have a look at that if you want and play around with it. You can change the interest rate and a bunch of other things and it'll recalculate the clean and dirty prices for you. So that was everything for this week. Uh, we're going to continue talking about bonds next week and I'll see you then.